Okay, hello everyone. I will start. Uh, this is my talk. Uh, today's talk is about Oxford procedure step by step. I will present uh, my operating procedure. Uh, there are so many tips and tricks about this technique. So uh, this is the concept of you care how to repair, produce the normal knee. So uh, this uh, one solution is the resurfacing. Uh, basically, the UK is a resurfacing surface surgery, not a reconstruct surgery, uh, because the most major ligaments and soft tissue are retained in this uh, procedure. So the ligament balance is primary. Uh, this is a condition to uh, application of the UKA is the two uh, indications. The one is monochondrial OA, unichondrial OA. Uh, typically, uh, that is a media osteoarthritis and normal lateral cartilage. Uh, on this X-ray shows that protects the defect on bone, bone. Uh, the lateral size uh, preserves a normal lateral cartridge and intact ACL and osteonecrosis. Uh, this is very frequent in Japan uh, because maybe it, it's caused by the osteoporosis and some uh, stress concentration due to you know, the meniscus excursion. And pain and function continue at least three months and the failed conservative treatment is mandatory. So to uh, make the decision of the UK is depend on the stress X-ray. So this is a typical uh, procedure to take X-ray in fraction in the 20 degrees in the fraction and slant the extra X-ray beam approximately 10 degrees from the upward. In the vagus and vagus stress in 20 degrees in the friction, in vagus stress x-ray shows, shows uh, bone bone in the medial side. And in the vagus stress, uh, no more at a cartridge and correctable vagus. Oh, but we should uh, take into account Many Asian people have the constitutional bias. Uh, that means the native alignment is not uh, mechanical. That shows the femoral head center and knee center and the ankle center come in the same line. But some patients have passed the weight road line that connects the line between femoral head center to the ankle center. Uh, they can pass media to the center of the knee. So uh, I not only the if we uh, femoral tibia angle, but also uh, the joint line, both the femoral side and the tibia side. If in the vagus stress, uh, that joint line uh, come to the palate in the vagus stress. I consider it is a correctable. If media side is still tight, still short, that implies the contraction, uh, contracture of the MCL uh, that is not suitable for the UKA. <clears throat> uh, in addition to the stress X-ray, the Rosenberg view is very beneficial to identify the media side bone bone and intact lateral cartridge. So I prefer to use both stress X-ray uh, that is taken in 20 degrees in fraction. And Rosenberg view is taken in the 45 degrees in fraction. It's a something different part of the cartridge wire area. Now sometimes in the 20 degrees in fraction, the, uh, we can see some joint space. That means 
uh, that there is still normal cartridge in the contact point at the 20 degrees in the friction, but in the deeper friction, in 45 degrees, uh, there, is, there is no cartridge anymore. So we can identify. So it's very beneficial to evaluate the joint space in the different angles. <clears throat> oh, this is a typical anti-media array, OA, uh, that shows the intact ACL and intact posterior media cartridge, uh, but anterior media tibial side cartridge and media femoral condyl cartridge has already worn out. <clears throat> so after the decision of the UK, we'll uh, move on to the operation theater. And this is the position of the patient. Uh, for the <clears throat> single side uh, operation, I prefer to use this leg holder. Then the patient leg hang from uh, this the leg holder and we should identify the space. So we should make sure the patient can flex, flex fully and extend fully. And there is the enough space between leg holder to the popliteal area. Uh, because sometimes this distance is very close and even sometimes touch this uh, leg holder touch to the popliteal area that can increase the risk or the damage of the neurovascular. So we should frequently check the distance from uh, this leg holder to the popliteal area. <clears throat> then our approach is uh, you can you can use any approach, but I strongly recommend to the uh, subpasses approach. Uh, I already published uh, regarding this approach in the clinics in orthopedics in 2019. So this article is free access, open access too. So you can find very easily. <clears throat> and it can, it, through this approach, the old basal muscles are uh, retained. Anyway, after the opening of the media side of the joint, the first three, I should check the condition of the artery cartridge. Uh, I prefer to classify it to, into the same grade of the art, art, uh, microscopic articular art, cartridge wear. So this is, refer, uh, this is uh, following of the Oxford group. So one is a normal, normal, completely normal. Uh, the articular surface is very smooth and clean. But the second grade is a superficial damage. Uh, it is a cartridge is still uh, have the normal thickness, but the surface of the cartridge uh, uh, can has some damage, uh, for example, with the fibrillation or some uh, the crack on the surface of the uh, cartridge. And then the partial thickness loss is uh, there are some layer of the cartridge, uh, but <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, uh, the thickness of the cartridge is apparently decrease compared to the normal thickness of cartridge. So then this is a part of thickness. And the four and five is for thickness cartridge loss. And four is less than two square centimeters. And five means uh, the more than two square centimeters. So uh, this is uh, the condition to the indication of the UK, at least with the one condyle, media side condyle. And the further uh, finding is the bone defect. It is classified into the two stages. 
the one is the bone defect less than five millimeter, and another is more than five millimeter. And this finding should be recorded regarding to the several areas. The one is the medial femoral condyle, the second, the lateral femoral condyle at weighted area. And the third one is non-weighted area of the lateral cartilage uh, because of the some subluxation or stress of the tibia, uh, this area can impinge against the medial uh, lateral tibia spine. That can cause the deep clock or, or some uh, difficult of cartilage at this area. However, this is a no weight bearing area, so it doesn't matter to go move on to uh, the further step of the UKA. But very important is the weighted area, this one. Uh, sometimes we can find some cartilage defect or the both partial or for thickness of cartilage way at that area. So once we find this one, uh, we sh uh, I recommend to convert to TKA or both CR, PS, or even BCR. So because the uh, damage of this area can cause the subsequent lateral OA progression. And uh, this is trochlear and the media tibia plateau and media and lateral passes of patella. But unfortunately, we can't see the status of the lateral tibia condyle because that is covered by uh, the lateral meniscus that is wider in the uh, compared to the media side meniscus. So we can rarely see and revelate uh, the status or the condition of the lateral tibia surface. And this is the classification of the, uh, the ACL. This is a normal. Uh, normal ACL means the thickness and the tension is quite normal. And uh, the ACL is covered by the normal synovium like this. So we can see some small vessel uh, on the surface of the ACL, that means the normal, completely normal ACL. And after the progression of the OA, uh, the old ACL fibers are intact. But however, this is beard. Uh, there is no uh, synovia on the surface of the ACL anymore. So we can see that next stage, sign of beer damage. The third one is uh, substance of the ACL is already damaged, but uh, that have the normal tension and the strength. But there is some split of the longitudinal split and some case in the partial tear of the ACL. So we call it uh, three grades we call uh, as the ACL intact knee. And the fourth grade is friable and fragmented. Uh, there is uh, some fiber in connecting to the female side and lateral side. Uh, there is uh, still continuous fibers, but they are a bit thin and weak. And we, it can be damaged or torn by the pull, mild pull. Uh, using some forceps or the uh, ligament hook. So uh, it means uh, there are stiff ACL fibers exist. However, it doesn't work anymore. Only uh, the object, but no function. That means the fiber and fragmented and the, the fifth grade is absent. Uh, the fiber of ACL is completely disappeared. So we classified into uh, five grade and roughly classified into the two grade category. One is the ACL functioning is one, two, three. 
rate. And these are deficient genes uh, that have the ACL with, uh, of the grade four and the grade five. And the five initial after the make a decision of the suitability of the MCL, then we move on to the next step to the operation procedure. <clears throat> uh, the first first step should be the osteophyte removal. <clears throat> we call it uh, it osteophyte osteophyte tour uh, because uh, this procedure is a very very sequential. Uh, it's, uh, this procedure must follow uh, the definite uh, the stream or the way of the removal of procedure. The first step should be the removal of osteophyte in front of the ACA on the tibia plateau. <clears throat> so sometimes it, uh, it can disturb the full extension of the knee due to the impingement of this osteophyte uh, to the trochlea. So uh, if you should carefully feel uh, that this bone protrusion on the anterior uh, to the insertion of the ACL on the tibias tibia plateau. Uh, this osteophyte is sometimes covered by the fat tissue, so it is very important to feel uh, the feeling of this osteophyte using your finger. So once you feel some osteophyte here or some bony protrusion here, you should remove uh, osteophyte using the nebra. So second step should be uh, the removal of the osteophyte on the lateral outlet of the intercondrite notch. So this osteophyte is always very sharp, so it can damage ACL, and that can cause the subsequent ACL deficient. So uh, I recommend to remove osteophyte here in all cases. The third to detach between the medial condyle and the MCL. Uh, in uh, the operation step or op operation manual or uh, some instructional course of the Oxford, uh, the instructors always recommend to remove uh, osteophyte here at first, but I don't recommend to remove osteophyte here because this osteophyte can push the sidal bone cut laterally that can prevent the two medials bone cut regarding to the uh, tibia side sidal cut. So uh, in contrast, medial side of the medial condyle, uh, the osteophyte should be removed. It should be the continuous from the upper side to the lower side using the big nebra. So because this osteophyte can push the MCL medially, that can shorten the medial gap, uh, uh, that can cause the imbalance of the joint gap. So uh, I, I carefully, I carefully uh, take the best uh, care about the removal of osteophyte here. And then I'll remove uh, the medial edge of osteophyte under the meniscus, between the meniscus and the medial condyle. Uh, this space is very also very important. But uh, in this step, uh, it's uh, quite easy to damage insertion of the MCL. So you should, first rate, you should protect the MCL using the Z cramp and uh, insert the very thin, uh, the uh, chisel and uh, the heat, the chisel in the downward, never the upward. Otherwise, you can damage the MCL. 
Okay. Uh, so the this five steps in the in front of ACL and the second lateral outlet of the intercondral notch and uh, detachment between the medial condyle and the PCL and removal of osteophyte on the medial edge of uh, the medial condyle and uh, remove the osteophyte between the MCL and medial condyle. That's all. So this is the osteophyte in front of ACL. So, but sometimes it can damage the anterior home of the lateral meniscus. So you should take care never to damage the lateral uh, meniscus. So after osteophyte removal, so feel the osteophyte like this, then using the nebula rodule, remove remove the osteophyte here. Then remove osteophyte here. Uh, this is before the removal of osteophyte. This is after the removal of the osteophyte. So uh, this space is enlarged. So that can uh, prevent the further uh, the damage of ACL. And so this video is uh, the right side is lateral. So I recommend to do this procedure as a routine procedure. And uh, you should prepare some chisel uh, in 10 millimeter in width. And then you uh, insert the chisel blade approximately five millimeter, never too deep. Otherwise you can damage the female side insertion of the ACL. Like this, this one. Again, right side is lateral. After the removal of osteophyte, you can see the very wide space around the ACL. It is very relieved. The uh, next step is to make the space between the PCL and the, uh, the medial condyle lateral wall or the medial condyle. So it is quite important step. Uh, because uh, sometimes without this tip, sometimes the bone so goes straight to the PCL and PCL can be damaged by the cytal bone cut. So to avoid this, to identify the best way to insert the cytal bone break. So once insert the elevator and then make the mark at the just media to the tip of the media tibia spine. This is the target of the ML portion of the sidal cut. So uh, I recommend to make the mark using the cartridge uh, uh, here, just uh, media to uh, the ACL insertion. Uh, great, take a great care. Uh, because uh, sometimes the tip of uh, the media spine is covered by the ACL. So you should carefully retract the ACL fiber laterally and the pine, the tip of the media femur, media tibia spine, and uh, make the line, uh, make the mark, uh, just media to the tip of uh, the media tibia spine. So uh, they can act as the sole blade guide. Uh, this mark can prevent the media slope, slope uh, slip of the cytal sole. So 
uh, I recommend to make the mark here. Okay, uh, only this is uh, the time to end. So I will upload this video on the YouTube and I will continue this explanation in the next week, next Tuesday. And please come and join and enjoy. And if you have any question, please send me a mail or leave the comment on uh, this Teams or the messenger on the Facebook. Okay. See you next week and have a good night. Bye.